Now, Senator Tim Scott is set to meet with families in Iowa that homeschool their kids. That is of note because earlier today, the Republican lawmaker launched a presidential exploratory committee as he most possibly forming, possibly formally jumping into the 2024 race for the Republican nomination. In the announcement video, he said he would not back down from defending conservative values. CBS News political director Finn Gomez joins us now. So, uh, Finn, for people who are sort of scratching their heads uh, saying, what does an exploratory committee mean? Are you running or are you not running? Uh, explain, just break that down for viewers. Yeah, absolutely. An exploratory committee is essentially a prelude to a formal campaign. Uh, it's essentially uh, a, in many ways, a campaign um, uh, in, in, in structure, the very similar to a campaign structure, it allows you to uh, raise money, uh, but and in, in do other other functions of a campaign. But uh, what it does, it, it essentially allows you to take two bites of that apple. Um, you could um, essentially lead into a more formal announcement uh, of of a campaign. Uh, it, over in over three decades or so, uh, Vlad, there have only been two instances that I can recall where a uh, presidential hopeful. Uh, launched a pl uh, presidential exploratory committee and then, then decided to not run. And that was uh, Paul Wellstone in 2000 and Evan Bayh in 2008. So overwhelmingly, once you establish this uh, this exploratory committee, most presidential hopefuls do the do the do the the next step, which is launching that formal formal presidential campaign. Vlad and, and Finn, presidential candidate Nikki Haley is also in the Hawkeye state, but a new poll shows former President Trump far ahead of both Haley and Scott uh, among South Carolina Republicans where, you know, she was governor. How is Haley's campaign approaching driving up those numbers? Because that's a big gap. It is a big gap, Omar. And I mean, uh, you did have Donald Trump at 41 percent. The, the second closest to him was uh, Florida Governor uh, Ron DeSantis, who has not yet formally announced uh, a, a, his own uh, presidential bid, but is widely expected to after his legis legislative session uh, ends in uh, uh, early next month. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now you can see that pr the presence of the former president, he still has that very strong uh, uh, early run or front, uh, early front runner status, if you will, Omar. Uh, however, you know, uh, speaking to other um, rivals, speaking to other rivals' campaigns and their uh, strategists and advisors, they believe that there is space, uh, especially if you talk to people close to Tim Scott, they believe that there is a space that he can provide where this, it's more of this, this optimistic, positive message, being conservative but not, not angry about it, as someone described it to me. Uh, that there, if, you can, if you compare that and contrast that to uh, Donald Trump's sort of uh, thematic, uh, overall thematic, uh, um, um, uh, how he portrays his campaign, how he portrays himself, and even the, his squabbling uh, with uh, with a potential rival, uh, Ron DeSantis, uh, they say that there is this space, uh, alternative space, where where it's not that, where it's a contrast to that, where it's positive and it's not negative, and I think that there's uh, there's some belief that he could he could uh, make a a uh, competitive option for Republican voters as we head further into this presidential cycle. But you're right, there's a lot of ground that he has to make up uh, to get to that point. So uh, let me ask you about this, Finn. In the wake of the mass shooting in Louisville, uh, which GOP candidates, what have they been saying or not saying about tackling gun violence? I, I, I will note that uh, over the last couple of days, we've seen people calling out for example, Senator Ted Cruz, who days before uh, the massacre in Louisville, Kentucky, suggested that banks were safer than places uh, like schools because they had armed guards there protecting the money and perhaps protecting patrons, of course, now in the wake of the shooting at a bank um, where people lost their lives. I wonder what Ted Cruz is saying. You know, Vlad, uh, I think that's a great point. Um, overall, we spoke, we reached out, uh, the CBS uh, political unit reached out to um, 2024 candidates, Republican candidates, uh, potential uh, Republican candidates, hopefuls. And, and so far, the response we have received from them has been a muted response. There has not been a lot of engagement into this. Uh, you know, uh, for uh, for many, they cloak themselves in this Second Amendment um, 
uh, portrayal to um, to connect with the Republican uh, electorate and that base voter who, uh, for the most part, has been very pro uh, Second Amendment, pro uh, gun rights, if you will. And so it, it, it's it's this political uh, positioning and posturing where they uh, essentially have to adhere to that. Uh, but overall, they have not um, responded. They have not engaged, and they have and been relatively muted uh, on this topic, Vlad. Hmm. Well, it's a long way away, but we're still watching the horse race. So, Finn, thanks for putting it all into perspective for us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.